Welcome to the Technocation series on FreeCAD. This series is designed to get you up and running as fast as possible so that you can get right to your projects. Whether you're a DIYer, a woodworker, or just a general maker, this series will get you up and running with FreeCAD. Before we jump into it, some quick background. FreeCAD, as the name says, is free. It's also a very good, fully functional CAD program. And what's nice about FreeCAD is you can do pretty much anything with it. You can do any kind of project you can imagine. FreeCAD is also readily available for almost any operating system that includes Mac, Linux, and Windows. It also is very well supported and very well documented. So this is something that, even though it's free, acts a lot more like commercial software than it does like freeware. Now, I know there are a lot of other packages out there, some that are really geared to be specific to certain types of uses, but it's nice to have a general use CAD application and get used to it. You can do a lot more and it opens up a lot of new possibilities for your work. One day you might be working on a cabinet frame, the next day you might be working on an electronics project. You can do all those things within this CAD software. So with a little bit of that background out of the way, let's jump right into it and let's download FreeCAD. Go to FreeCAD.org, click on the Download Now icon, and then select your operating system. The download will start instantaneously, but it will take you to this page asking for a donation. Now, I highly recommend that if you're able to support freeware like this, so the development continues and the software keeps getting better and better, especially if you plan on using this software on a regular basis. While that file is downloading and you're installing it, let's talk a little bit about terminology and how it's going to apply to CAD. The main component we're gonna be working with is a part. And a part is something like this piece of wood that has certain characteristics together and can be disconnected from another part. When we take two parts and we put them together, we're making an assembly. The first thing we're gonna do in our design is we're gonna start by designing parts and those parts will assemble into our project. In this tutorial series, we're gonna build a basic drawer box. So for the rest of this video, we're just gonna create one single panel of that box frame, and we're gonna talk about the different ways you can do that in FreeCAD. When you first start up FreeCAD, you're gonna see a screen like this. You're gonna see the FreeCAD banner with the version number that you're using, and in this case, it's 0.20.1, .1. and you'll see that we have our recent files and some examples that we can open. So we're gonna start by creating a new project. Now under application in this combo view, in the model bar, we'll see that there's a new unnamed project. Now we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And this will allow us to name the project which we'll call Draw Demo. Now that we have the project saved, we can go ahead and we can create our first part. An important part about how FreeCAD works is we have these different workbenches. And these will change based on context, but for this project, all we're really gonna be concerned about is the sketcher and part design workbench. So we'll start out in the part design workbench, and what this will allow us to do is create our first part. Now you'll notice that when we change the workbench, we move in the combo view from the model where we were over to a tasks view. And tasks view will show you what it recommends that we start out doing. And in this case, you can see start a new part. So we'll click on this yellow icon right here that says create part. And now if we click back on the model, we'll see we have our first part. And once we click on that, we can see that our workspace changes to a blank area. Now, when we create a part, we're gonna create it using different features, and those different features of a part are called bodies. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do inside of a part is create our first body. And to create a body, you're gonna click on this blue icon right here. With a part and a body created, we can go ahead and we can name what we wanna call this part. So we can right click on that, click on rename, and we'll call this drawer front. Now that we got most of the legwork out of the way and we have our project file set up and we have our part container, 
we can go ahead and we can actually start making something in this model. The first step of creating any part of the model is a sketch. To create the sketch, we want to make sure we're in the part design workbench. Then we want to select the body and we want to click on the icon for create sketch. Once we click create sketch, we're going to be asked to select a plane that we want to sketch on. Now, when I'm doing a sketch, I like to select the plane as it would appear to me if I was looking at the final product. Since we're talking about a drawer front, it would be on the XZ plane. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the XZ plane. Now you can see that a grid is formed and we can start drawing on this screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this grid size to one inch. Now one thing to notice is that in order to see these sketching tools, we're now in the Sketcher workbench. So FreeCAD has automatically switched us from the part design workbench to the Sketcher workbench, changing the tools that are available. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a simple rectangle. And to do that, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and we will draw a rectangle in the middle of the workspace by clicking on one corner, dragging, and then clicking where we want to stop. The dimensions at this point are not important. Once we have the rectangle drawn, we need to dimension it and constrain it as far as degrees of freedom go. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a size for the top and the bottom. Since this is a rectangle, to be exactly the same. And one thing you might notice on the screen are these little tiny lines. These mean that these surfaces are parallel to each other. For a rectangle, you have two sets of parallel sides. To get out of the rectangle tool, I'll hit escape. Then I will left click on one of the sides. And then I'll go up here and I will click the horizontal constrain distance. So for this model, I'm just going to make this 10 inches. When I say OK, the model is now going to change that dimension to 10 inches. Now right off the bat, we're going to see that the new drawer width is larger than the screen we're looking at. To zoom in and zoom out, you're going to use the scroll wheel on your mouse. As we go through this tutorial, I'll bring up navigation techniques as they come up. But the one thing I want to make sure that you have set is that down here in the lower right hand corner, you have different options for different ways of navigating. If you click on this, you can see all the different navigation settings based on CAD, Blender, and other software packages. So I'm going to use gesture for this tutorial. If you need a quick reference to how to use different movements, just hover over gesture and it will give you all the different mouse clicks to do different things. Now that we can see the whole draw face again, we'll go ahead and we'll dimension the sides. So in this case, I will click one of the sides and now I will click the vertical distance constraint. And in this case, I'm just going to type in four inches. Now we essentially have the basic sketch for our drawer. The only thing we need to do now is to constrain its degrees of freedom. And this is to lock down the part so that it can't freely move accidentally. Now when we create a part, the best practice is to create it equally around the origin. So this dot in the middle is the origin of these two axes. To constrain this so it's centered around the axes, we're going to need to select two points. So on the Mac, I'm going to use Command to do a multiple selection and select this point here and this point here. But on a PC or a Linux, you can use the equivalent key for a multiple selection. Now we can go up to the horizontal constraint. And in this case, we want it to be exactly in the middle. So we know the drawer is 10 inches wide. So we can just type in 5 inches. Or we can even do math in this window by going 10 divided by 2. Now we can see that the sketch is constrained to be left and right, perfectly centered on the vertical axis. So to do the horizontal axis, we'll do exactly the same thing. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select one point from the top. We'll select the origin again, but this time we're going to go ahead and select the vertical constraint. We can enter the constraint at two inches, which is half of the four inches of the draw height. Hit OK. 
And now we can see that our model is what we call fully constrained. And this means that it cannot accidentally be moved because we've set dimensions for height, width, and the dimensions from the origin. So it's locked in place now. So we can hit the update button, we can close this, and now we have a 2D representation of our draw front. We're gonna wanna take this and we're gonna wanna convert this to three dimensions. And to do that, we're gonna go up and we're gonna click on the pad button. When we click pad, it's gonna bring up another menu and it's gonna ask us for a length and we're gonna set that for one half inch, which is the dimension of the boards I would use to make a drawer. And we will say, okay. We can now see that it's been projected out by that distance and we can rotate around it and see our three-dimensional shape. Congratulations, you completed your first 3D model of a board. Now I know it's just a board, but in future lessons we'll get to building that entire draw box and I'll teach you more tricks along the way. Now if you like this video and you wanna see the rest of this series, make sure you subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or go check out the accompanying blog post on the website and leave a comment there. I try to get to everyone's questions, but there are also a lot of other people with experience that will also help out by posting in the comments below. So I highly encourage that. And don't forget to go ahead and click off that bell icon because it's really easy to miss the new videos and that will always give you a nice reminder. Thanks for taking the first big step in learning CAD design, and I will hopefully see you again in lesson two, which will be on the power of parametrics.